good morning, happy Wednesday, Merry Vlogmas. I hope that it is a bright, sunshiny day in your corner of the world, and if it's not, then I hope that you have lots of fun crafting goodness to keep you happy today. What's making me happy today is that I'm finally ready to share with you some English paper piecing. And um, I've been looking forward to doing this for a really long time. So I've prepared a few things here today to share with you. And when I started thinking last night about how I would show you what I do for English paper piecing, I thought, you know, that's a lot of information. Um, and I'd like these Vlogmas episodes to stay short and fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break it up into several different videos. I'm probably not going to do them one day right after the next. There will probably be a few days in between. And, you know, I think I thought that might also give you a chance if you'd like to stitch along with me to gather your supplies and, um, and join with me because it's super fun and super addictive. I think you're really going to love it. Now there are several different ways to English paper piece. There is no wrong way, though I'm sure, um, you know, if, if I were a purist, there would be a right way and a wrong way. However, I like to keep things fun. I like to keep things simple. And I'm also generally somewhat set in my ways in the way that I do things, though I have been known to change in the past. So if someone were to show me an easier or a better way, um, I might adapt. I don't know. I really like the way that I do things, but I know for sure that there are other methods, other ways that people English paper piece that also floats their boat. So what I'm showing you today is my method of English paper piecing. This was how I learned. Um, but again, you're going to see lots of different variations on what I'm doing here today. And as you can see, we've got Henry supervising the process. So today I wanted to share with you all of the supplies, the materials needed, and the basic preparation of the Hexi. That's this little guy here. And as you can see, he's already covered in fabric, ready to go. So that's what we're going to get to by the end of today's little mini episode. And I promise you it won't take long. So uh, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need some general all-purpose sewing thread. Doesn't matter, cheap, doesn't matter if it's cheap or expensive. Um, this is just going to be used as a basting thread, okay? So whatever you've got on hand is totally fine. Um, I like white, just a personal preference. You're going to need some scissors. You're going to use some pins. That's how I do it. Some people use uh, glue, fabric glue. Okay, those glue sticks, they can, you can use those as well. Um, but I use pins, so that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, I have a measuring tape here, only to show you the size of my hexes. You probably won't need one unless you are cutting your fabric, um, you know, by hand, which also is maybe possible. I use a rotary cutter and my cutting mat because I sew a lot, and so I have those tools at home. If you don't have those tools at home, a simple pair of scissors and a ruler and you're good to go. You do not need to buy a lot of supplies for this. Use what you have and make it work. Um, the size, now, oh, the other thing you're going to need, and this is kind of important, you're going to need some paper templates to stretch your fabric around. Now, um, you can buy these pre-made. I believe there's a website called paperpiecing.com. Um, I do not tend to buy mine pre-made. My daughter, um, we have a Cricut, one of those um, cutting paper cutting machines, and we have, a, we have a template for the Cricut that cuts hexagon shapes. I believe it actually came, it was one of the one of the templates that came with the machine even, so we didn't even have to buy one um, extra because trust me, the machine was expensive enough. But she has used that thing for her school projects and for, you know, craft crafting projects a lot since we bought it. We maybe bought it five or six years ago and we have definitely gotten our money out of it. So if you have a little bit of Christmas money that you're looking to spend and this is something that you think would really float your boat, um, a Cricut is maybe a good investment. I don't know. 
You can also cut these out by hand. As long as you're precise, they need to be precise. So make yourself a template and then trace and cut and you should be good to go, okay? So as you can see, I use cardstock to make my templates from and I reuse them over and over and over again because, well, they're cardstock. So they don't, you know, you don't need to throw them away after you've used it once. So I've actually done several projects with these slightly older um, templates. You can see there's a whole pile of them here and they all have holes in them and they all still work just fine. So don't throw them out, keep them, reuse them. You'll use them lots. Okay, so we've got our paper templates. Now to show you the size that I'm using, um, the size that I'm using, now I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I always measure from point to point. And so from point to point, I have, oh, I'm showing you. So for those using the metric system, we have six centimeters across. For those using Imperial, we are at two and a half inches, two and a half inches across the two points, okay? I then cut my fabric in three inch squares. You can do this by hand, you can do it using a rotary cutter. It doesn't even have to be exact. As long as you have enough fabric to completely surround the size of your hexagon, you're good to go. So again, you do not need to run out and buy a rotary cutter and a mat. Just use a pair of scissors, it's fine. Okay, um, I have a stack of fabrics from my scrap bin because that's what English paper piecing is best for using up those scraps and after I made the holiday bags I have a lot of scraps of this particular really sweet Christmas fabric so I'm going to make something I don't know what I'm going to make yet but by the time I'm done this little series I'm actually planning on having a little finished object um, to share with you so details to follow okay so we have our three inch square piece of fabric. We have, um, so I'll start with a new one to show you. Fabric, hexagon, template, a pin, nice sharp new pins. Pin your template in place like that. Okay. Now when I'm on a roll with English paper piecing, I will make up a whole bunch of these at one time. So as you can see, I have a little stack here that's ready to go. And then, you know, when I have a few moments, I can pick up a hexagon. Just making one little hexagon is quite fun. It's a little bit addictive. And so always having the supplies ready in a little pouch or a little parcel next to your chair. Um, and you'd be surprised at how much you can accomplish with just, you know, 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, just to make a hexagon. Okay, so I wanted to do, I wanted to stitch the red one so that you could see it really clearly what I'm doing. Okay, whoops, lost my scissors there. Okay, so um, you're going to have a longish piece of thread to start with, and you want a fairly sharp needle. So you're going to be using a sewing needle. I could not find a sewing needle to save my life last night. So I'm cheating and I'm using a tapestry needle, which is not nearly as easy because of course the end is a little bit more blunt. A sewing needle is going to have a much sharper tip, which is going to pierce the paper much more easily. But again, I couldn't find one. I'm making do with what I have. Okay, so I then I take my long piece of thread. I put a little knot in the very end and then I'm ready to go. So I like to start, um, do you see where the tip of the pin is coming out? I like to flip that around. I am right-handed and I go this way because I find if I start this way with my sewing, then I am always poking myself on the end of that pin. So I'm a right-handed person. I start with the tip of the needle headed to the right. You fold down the top part of the fabric, and this is just like wrapping a present or making hospital corners on a bed. You fold that first corner down like that, and keep the fabric nice and neat and right to the edge of the hexagon template like that. So you can see 
this edge is clean and this edge is clean as well. Take your needle from the back, come up on the right side of the fabric and then tack down the other corner. Oh, I wish I had a sharper needle. There, okay, so as you can see, I've come up on this side and down on this side, and I think you can gather what that's going to do. It's going to tack that, it's going to tack that little corner down and hold it in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn to the left, and now I'm going to keep doing the exact same thing all the way around the template. This was a bad choice of a needle. I'm gonna end up hurting my finger. I should also say I generally tend to use a thimble as well when I do this. Oh, I really need a sewing needle. Okay, use a sewing needle. There, that's a good lesson for today. See, I did it on purpose to teach you a lesson. Okay, so this corner is now flat. I'm still working my way all the way around. Sewing it down. I think this fabric is a little thicker as well, which does not help. This fabric was slightly thinner and my needle went through a little more easily. This fabric is just that little bit much thicker and it's creating a little bit more resistance um, to that slightly blunt needle. Almost done. Okay, so you can see I'm back where I started. I've got one final corner and I wanna make sure that it is neat and as tidy as I can make it. So just fiddle the fabric a little bit with your finger until you get that nice crisp point at the top there. Tack down that last corner. Like that. And then, now I dropped my embroidery scissors, so I'm gonna use my big old sewing scissors here. Clip off a length, you know, don't clip it close to the hexagon because this is not secured, okay? So leave yourself a good length. That's it. You do not need to tie a knot. You do not need to do anything else because this is simply a basting stitch. As you can see, I've basted all the way around the outside. Eventually, this is going to be removed, okay? So that's why we don't have to be, um, we don't have to tie a knot. We don't have to secure it. We don't really have to do anything. As long as you leave enough of a tail that you can, you know, tighten it if it needs it, then that's, that's sufficient. That's really all you need. Okay. So that's it. We've made our first fabric covered hexagon. And as you can see, you want to start planning your, sh your shape. Hexagons make a lovely flower shape. And so what I would like to do is take my, now because these this fabric has straight lines, I'm probably going to make an effort to make sure that it's random and that I don't have, you know, something like this where it looks like it should be matched up. I'm going to, that, that you can do that. It's called fussy cutting. And, um, you know, you can make the pattern match as you go around the square. I, I don't have, I, I have not attempted to do fussy cutting yet, and I have a feeling that if I did, it would really, really, really mess with my slight obsessive compulsive tendencies and would probably make me very miserable. <laughs> so I am going to purposefully make it not match, and then that in itself is part of my plan to make it look just like a pretty design. And then you can, so you can play with it. It's easier if you play with it on the flat surface. So I'm going to have the red as my center and then I'm going to play with the shapes until I get them sort of in a design that I like. I have three more hexagons to make to complete my flower and then I'm going to go from there. So there you go. That is a very 
quick introduction to the beginnings of English paper piecing and then either tomorrow or um, Friday is going to be the Stitch With Me video. So tomorrow or next Tuesday I will put up part two and part two will be sewing the hexagons together and then later next week probably Thursday I will put up the third part which is where I'm going to take this flower and I'm going to turn it into something finished a finished object and hopefully by next Thursday I will actually know what that finished object is going to be because at the moment I don't have a clue but that's okay because we're creative sorts aren't we and we can dream up fun and exciting things and different ways to use our our um our special projects and things that we love to do. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a happy, happy Wednesday. Today is a very busy teaching day for me. I'm looking forward to seeing all of my students tonight. And before my students arrive, I still have some more sewing to do this afternoon. So I better get to it and I will see you tomorrow. Happy stitching. <laughs>